Some 65 million years ago, the mammals were still obliged to live in secrecy, still trying to stay hidden from the giant reptiles which had ruled the world for the previous 150 million years. But that reign was to come abruptly to a close. When you go to the end of the Cretaceous to see the rocks deposited then, there's very easy to recognize evidence that an enormous catastrophe was caused by this asteroid impact. We see the result of tidal waves, we find material falling from the sky, we even find minerals that we don't find on Earth, such as iridium. Dinosaurs were wiped out, the mammals survived. Now we stand and wonder at the bones of these giant lizards which were the dominant species for so long. The world was now for the taking. Mammals were able to move into every niche, but it was one group that lived in the trees that began a new line in the evolutionary path. This fossil dates to about nine million years after the dinosaurs had gone. It's called Carpolestes. There is a feature of this skeleton which is intriguing. On one of its limbs, there are fingers, and one of them bends toward the palm. This is what primates have today. From this fossil, we can try to reconstruct its world. Like many mammals, it was probably nocturnal. More than likely, it spent most of the time in the trees. It was safer there than on the forest floor. Its diet may have been fruit and berries, but Carbolesti's lifestyle had hardly changed since the time of dinosaurs. There were still ferocious predators on the prowl. This fossil gives the clue. The creature which made this footprint was a contemporary of Carpolestes. They belong to a bird, a giant bird called Diatrima, almost two meters, seven feet tall, possibly the largest animal on land. Once the dinosaurs had gone, birds like this seized dominance. Dr. Lawrence Whitmar is a dinosaur expert at Ohio University. He has been studying the ecology of these giants for the last 15 years. He is fascinated by the skull. Well, when I first saw the skull of Diatrima, the first thing that I was struck by was its size. It's absolutely huge. This comes from a bird, but it's larger than any known bird skull that's living today. It's potentially uh, larger than what we see in a lion or a bear, but it's organized differently. What this animal used this unusual skull for? From the CT scans of the bird's skull, he detected large cavities on the inside of the cranium. He thinks this is where the muscles to move the beak were supported.
From their size, he is certain that the beak was very tough, capable of stripping flesh from prey animals, as lions do today. Its skull was very large in proportion to the size of its body. Obviously, it was a ferocious predator. We know that, that, that Diatrima, as, just like the Tyrannosaurs, had a very powerful bite that was, that was well adapted uh, for not just killing but also removing the flesh uh, from, from the bones. Um, so in a sense, what we see here with, with Diatrima, and I would imagine that the animals of its day viewed it in much the same way, was Diatrima was in many respects sort of a mini T-Rex. This reconstruction is based on the evidence gathered from the fossils. There were four species of this giant bird. They lived in forests and grasslands, but because of their weight, they were flightless. They could probably run as fast as humans today. But at this time, mammals were still mostly small and weren't able to move swiftly. The ancestor of the modern horse would not have stood a chance. Once dead, the flesh would have been ripped from the body by the giant and powerful beak. Little wonder that many of the small mammals still kept to the trees. These giant birds ruled from Europe to North America. also on other continents in the southern hemisphere. Everywhere except Asia. Here there are no fossil birds, only mammals. The giant birds ruled their domain for another 15 or 20 million years. Their end came as a result of two things a dramatic change in the climate, and from conflict. Sixty million years ago, there was a long and narrow sea which stretched between Asia and Europe, separating the two continents. At the other end, Asia was connected to North America by a land bridge located far north and under permanent ice. Nothing could cross in or out of Asia. So in Asia, mammals began to diversify, safe from the threat of the gigantic birds. And among the mammals was a predator, smaller than the birds, but with distinct advantages as Dr. Chris Beard knows. The hyenodontids were an amazing group of predatory mammals. Uh, there were really two main things that distinguished the hyenodontids from any other kinds of predatory mammals that were alive at this time. Uh, the first was that the hyenodontids had three sets of teeth on the upper and the lower jaws that, that were used to cut through flesh. Uh, the other thing that set hyenodontids apart for their time was that they were very fast runners. Um, the, the other uh, predatory mammals that were alive at the time of hyenodontids were slow, uh, ponderous animals that were not fast runners. Some of them could climb and, and were arboreal, but none of them were qu quick runners. The smooth round joints and sockets show that this creature was able to run fast and hunt down its prey. There 
would come a time when the mammal predators would come face to face with Diatrima, and there would only be one victor. But first, the ice bridge had to go. And it did. Once again, the climate shifted. Ice had melted and the land bridge was open. A confrontation was inevitable. It was just a matter of time. It was the mammals who made the journey to North America. We can imagine that hyenodontids, because they were fast runners, must have been the first pursuit predators. They must have been very wolf-like in the way that they hunted. Uh, they probably uh, ran around in packs and chased down their prey. Uh, that not only allowed them to capture their prey, but it also allowed them to capture larger prey. So when hyenodontins finally did migrate into the West, into North America and into Europe, it really signaled a change. And in a sense, um, dinosaur mammals had been sort of suppressed even during the age of dinosaurs. But even when dinosaurs became extinct, it was still another 15 or maybe even 20 million years before we can really say that the age of mammals began. The forests of the night were still dangerous places but now, mammal hunted mammal. Our ancestors, the primates, clung to the trees for shelter. But the evolutionary road was inevitably leading to the species which would rise to dominate the world. The eyesight of the primates evolved to be sharp. Their brain grew to be intelligent. They came to walk on two legs and to finally rule the miracle planet.